Good afternoon everybody, Chris F.E. Jackson here. Um, today I want to uh, just present out um, uh, Mr. David Tong, who's also um, um, uh, undertaken a Royal Institution lecture last February 2017. He's talking about quantum fields and the real building blocks of the universe. Uh, this is probably one of the most honest guys to have undertaken a lecture in modern times. And this chap is a particle physicist, a theoretical physicist, similar to um, Mr. Brian Cox. And uh, what he's going to say here um, is is sufficient. So I'll play this video on and uh, I'll let you listen to it. And uh, I, I, I won't interject too much, but um, I, I think I'll just let it play until we get to the crux of, of, the, uh, of the presentation. Take it away, David. And um, within 15 years of J.J. Thompson's discovery, his successor in Cambridge, a man called Ernest Rutherford, had figured out exactly what these atoms are made of. And this is the picture that, uh, that Rutherford came up with. So we now know that each of these elements consists of a nucleus, uh, which uh, is tiny, the uh, metaphor that Rutherford himself used was it's like a fly in the center of the cathedral. And then orbiting this nucleus in, I should add, fairly blurry orbits are the electrons, which uh, sort of fill out very sparsely the rest of the space. Blurry electrons, okay, blurry. Didn't define actual physical particles, but they were blurry. Thank you. So that's a picture of, of, of these atoms. Um, subsequently, we learned that uh, the nucleus uh, is not itself fundamental. The nucleus contains uh, smaller particles. They're particles that we call protons and neutrons. And in the 1970s, uh, we learned that the protons and neutrons aren't fundamental either. So in the 1970s, we learned that inside each proton and neutron are three smaller particles uh, that we call quarks. Uh, there are two different kinds of quarks. Um, by the 1970s, I, I'm guessing physicists didn't have a classical Greek education, and they'd kind of run out of you know, classy names. So we, we call these quarks uh, the up quark and the down quark, okay? <laughs> for no good reason. It's not like the up quark is higher than the down quark. It's not like it points up, just no, no good reason at all, the up quark and the down quark. So the proton consists of two up quarks and a down quark, and the neutron consists of two down quarks and an up quark. So at this point, uh, if you're listening and you haven't been bored already, um, I, I quite like this chap. Um, he, he's obviously very good at presenting out. Uh, he's very comfortable with himself and he's very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, confident. And it, forgive me for thinking um, that you would almost uh, suspect that he's talking about particles here. And you'd be right, because what he is talking about are particles, neutrons, protons, and he talks what's inside the quarks. But uh, I won't elaborate too much on that because I, I think this presentation is rather good. Okay. This, as far as we know, are the fundamental building blocks of, of nature. Uh, we've never discovered anything smaller than the electron, and we've never discovered anything smaller than uh, the quarks. So we have three particles of which everything we know is made. Three particles of everything that we know is made of. There you go. All right. Okay, we've got that. Move on. And it's it's worth stressing. It that's kind of astonishing. You know, it's uh, we sort of take it for granted. We learn this in school. We don't really think about it deeply. Everything we see in the world, all the diversity in the natural world, you, me, ev everything around us, we just the same uh, three particles with slightly different rearrangements repeated over and over and over again. Okay, it's, uh, it's an amazing lesson to, uh, to draw about how, how the world is, is put together. So that, that, that's what we have. We have an electron and, uh, and two quarks. And um, you know, these aren't the fundamental building blocks that the Greeks had thought about. And they're certainly not the fundamental building blocks that the Victorians had thought about. But uh, you know, the spirit of the issue really hasn't changed. The spirit is exactly what uh, Democritus uh, said 2,500 uh, years ago. It, it's that there are like Lego bricks from which everything in the world is constructed. 
These Lego bricks are particles, and the particles are the electron and two quarks. It's a very nice picture. It's a very comforting picture. It's the picture we teach kids at school. It's the uh, picture we even teach our students in undergraduate university. And there's a problem with it. Uh, the problem is, it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a white lie. It's a white lie that we tell our children because you know, we don't want to um, expose them to the, the difficult and horrible truth too early on. It makes it easier to learn if you believe that, that these particles are the fundamental building blocks of the universe. But it's simply not true. It's simply not true. Now, he's got to tell you here that we, we again, he said it's a lie, it's a white lie, why they describe these as particles. Now, this chap is telling us that uh, in amongst everyone else that are talking about these protons and neutrons and what have you, that we can construe, quite rightly, that they're particles. And he's saying they're actually not. But we tell you that so you can grasp the fact that there's something there. He's going to explain now exactly what it is. The best theories that we have of physics theories. do not have underlying them the quark particle and the two quark particle, and the, 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 <coughs> the, sorry, the electron particle and the two quark particles. They don't. In fact, the very best theories we have of physics don't rely on particles at all. The best theories we have tell us that the fundamental building blocks of nature are not particles, but something much more nebulous and abstract. The fundamental building blocks of nature are fluid-like substances which are spread throughout the entire universe and ripple in strange and interesting ways. Okay. That's the fundamental reality in, in which we live. Uh, these fluid-like substances we have a name for, uh, we call them fields. And there you go. He's going to show a picture of a field there now, people. So, so there you have it. So he said they're very nebulous and they're abstract, uh, or fluid-like, uh, in a state of change or continual change, you know, at, at an atomic level. So they're w w energy substances that are, you know, th these waves and fields, and uh, that's what we're all made up of, not not discrete particles as such. So I I have to take my hat off to you, David, and th say. Thank you very much for being open and honest. And uh, I won't play on anymore. I just wanted to get this out there. Um, um, I'm going to play this over again because I think it's uh, a rather poignant message um, that he's saying about the fundamental, uh, the fundamentals that he has, and the the best theories and of physics that they have today. And that's what he thinks. Now remember, people, this is this is the same type of chap or physical. A theoretical physicist and a particle physicist, the same as Mr. Brian Cox. You would never hear uh, Professor Brian Cox state such facts, would you? Now, okay. Well, with that, people, I shall leave it at there, and I uh, hope you enjoy this little uh, science uh, <laughs> uh, lecture from uh, Mr. David Tong. Uh, very enjoyable. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>